So in this video, I want to talk about what is the difference between the social sciences and the hard sciences, natural sciences, and want to talk about some of the differences and similarities between them. So if you don't know me, I am Professor Dave Maslach. I'm an Associate Professor of Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship, and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There's so many people that help me out that I wanted to pay the favor for it to help you out. So, you know, science is really, really tricky to sort of dichotomize and to say that there is one thing versus the next thing. And one way that a lot of people divide up science is the hard sciences or the natural sciences. So things like chemistry, things like physics, um, you know, um, oceanography, I guess, things along those lines compared to the social sciences. So things like, you know, economics, um, you know, business, um, you know, sociology, psychology, all those kind of things in those domains. And the truth is that there isn't that many differences between them. And part of this has to do with how science actually works in general. And it's a sort of systematic study that we actually do where we use the scientific method. And part of what we do with the scientific method is that we actually pull in information from as many sources as we can or many ideas as we can. So if there's an idea that's relevant to a certain field or a certain um, area and it comes from a different area, then we are likely to pull that in and, and to start talking about that particular thing. And that happens all the time where ideas come from outside of the fields and we just start talking about them. And it might take a little bit longer in certain areas, but often that does happen. There is trends across all of the sciences where we all pull from different areas. And it becomes difficult then to make a, a hard stop and to say that you know, this particular science is different than that particular science. In fact, I get very confused all the time when I start reading things and I don't know where is the right area to read in. So then I end up reading very broadly in different areas because we're all kind of looking at the same thing. We're looking at similar phenomenon at, around the world. You know, with the social sciences, one sort of thing that we do that is that is different or that is kind of unique is that we do tend to focus on human beings and the surroundings that they they actually work with right so anything that is really human um, but you know the distinction is not as clear as one would think it would be now there's differences in terms of, of how science actually is done and what science actually looks like in these fields but i think it has to do with more cultural phenomenon um, within the different domains than the actual science itself. So for, ex for example, um, you know, science, uh, the hard sciences tend to be, you know, big science, what they call big science. So they would have large labs with large budgets that are affiliated with them. And maybe there would be a, what is called a principal investigator and the principal investigator would um, you know, operate, maybe it's 20 different people or manage 20 different people within the big science. But with social sciences, often it's much more on a one-to-one -one basis where you're working in an apprenticeship type model where there might be, you know, an advisor and the advisor works with a student or a group of students. But, you know, this does change. And, and in the social sciences, there is you know, large labs now. There's large groups of people that are working together doing various different things. Uh, and, and so this model is, you know, it's not as clear as one would think. And sometimes people think that, you know, that the social sciences is, is softer, right? That there is this kind of distinction that it's kind of fluffy. Um, you know, as an engineer, that's my background is in engineering. And then I went into the social sciences. There's actually very incredibly rigorous uh, mathematical models within the social sciences that are actually really tough to follow and are challenging to make sense of um, that are far beyond what you'd ever expect even in the hard sciences. In fact, there's lots of physicists, for example, that go into economics and do economic modeling and, and they're, they're very, very rigorous in, in, in there might be statisticians, for example that might go and do economic modeling or stuff that's in sociology or whatever, in psychology, 
that is very, very sophisticated. Um, so you can't really make that distinction at all either. And um, in some parts of the fields, they do grow and they become much more prominent. And they do have an impact with these sort of very hard science-y type models or mathematical models. Um, so I wouldn't make that distinction either. Um, you know, what the difference is, or one difference that I think is kind of, um, it, it's culturally related, is that science has this much more, um, this, this kind of group theorizing where each individual work, each individual piece of article is not necessarily as theoretical as, um, you know, some of the social sciences stuff, but the social sciences stuff have these much larger scientific articles that go into very uh, minute details about theoretical models that they're thinking about. Uh, and so the way that science is done, and, and so that means when they do that, is that there tends to be much more, you know, in, in sort of the hard sciences or, short, um, you know, the, the, like science, it tends to be a lot more that, that people publish a lot of articles, for example, about um, a single phenomenon and the, the speed at which they publish articles is a lot faster than in the social sciences. Um, however, you know, that there is definitely, you know, variations with that as well. There's, there's um, some fields that publish a lot as well and, and in the social sciences. So it is hard to make this distinction is what I'm getting at. And the similarities between them are a lot more closer than one would think. And it would, it's, it's almost a bit of a false dichotomy sometimes. And it's almost just because of it's easier to make sense of and to fund um, in terms of research funding, for example, these different areas, um, because then it is easier to sort of sell the differences between them to an external audience. Uh, because it's, it's often difficult to say that, you know, the same models to understand chemistry, for example, can be applied to human beings. And people don't really like that. Um, so we, we often have these sort of distinctions. But, you know, if there's something that's interesting in chemistry, they would borrow it and, and start applying it to human beings. That happens all the time. A lot of sort of economic models, for example, borrow from physics in terms of how we understand the physical world. So, you know, this distinction has to be, we have to sort of think about it, you know, as, as sort of an insider view, we have to sort of be careful, and scientists often are very careful in terms of what this distinction is. What is different often, and it has to do with the audience that is gonna pay attention to what you're doing, is the journals that you send it to, and, and the audience itself so the peer reviewers and, and people like that, they're going to be paying attention to it in different ways and looking at your phenomenon in different ways and having sort of different insights. So if you send something about, you know, psychology to a chemistry journal, they're going to be probably a little bit confused in terms of what you're saying. And so you would send it to um, a, you know, the, the psychology work, you would send it to a psychology journal so people would understand it a little bit better. Uh, so, you know... If you, what I want to say is try not to make these false dichotomies in terms of what the differences are, because they're not as big as what you think that they are. What I would instead view science as more of a, you know, body of knowledge, but at the same time, how we actually think about the world and what we actually do to think about the world in a very systematic way. And to say that when we do come across something that we don't agree with, Often we do have to say we don't agree with that and move forward. Um, you know, it's not as easy as one would think to do that, but, but often that's what we have to do is to say that there is flaws with this particular idea and we build on that and go forward with it. So with that, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, do subscribe to the YouTube channel, take care, and have a wonderful day. Bye.